Girl, this one threw me off. Some of these other people, and you lost me. Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Before we get started, I just want to announce I've got merch. That is right. You can now get your Neon Noir hoodies, t-shirts, or whatever else you want down in the link below. But enough about that. Let's get into this episode. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Queen. UK vs. the world, season two, episode six, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. Make sure to stay tuned to the end where I let you know who had the best and worst looks of the week. Before we get into this episode, I just want to acknowledge that y'all went crazy in my comments last week. Now, I knew that saying Tia was gonna be my fab of the week it was gonna be slightly controversial, but I didn't think it was gonna be that controversial. But I hear you, and you know what? Looking back, I probably should have given it to Scarlett. But enough about last week, let's get into this week. This week's runway theme is business in the front, party in the back, where the queens must give us one look that is different on two sides. Who will shine bright? and who will fade into obscurity. Let's get into it and find out. First up, it's Marina Summers, and Marina Summers is coming out in her CEO, a realness look. She's coming out in this power suit with the pointiest shoulders and the blonde hair. She definitely says she owns 51% of this company. What I love about Marina's look is that she took the business in the front and party in the back very literally and but did it in her own way the front has got this beautiful power suit that definitely gives you that business vibe but as she turns around you discover that she is a party in the back and she is the karaoke one of the best parties in my opinion so she is giving you music she is giving you fun she is giving you all of the things on top of it she's played around with this little prop of a microphone to kind of give you that full fantasy overall i feel like this look is very very well thought through and very well put together. And the concept really works. And it really works because it is such a contrast between the two. And that's really what I would want to see. Some of these other people eh, were a little bit questionable and we'll get into them in a minute. But Marina really knocked it out of the park. All in all, this is 100% gonna be a bug. Next up is Hannah Conda. And Hannah Conda is coming out as a cat in a gold suit. Girl, this one threw me off. I was not expecting a cat to come out of this. On top of it, if a cat's coming out, why is she wearing a gold suit? I like Hanaconda's weird, campy, strange thinking that, you know, why not make it a character? Why not make it fun? Why does it have to be so serious? So I love that about Hannah, but this one, really was a little bit all over the place for me. I like the cat idea, but I don't like this gold suit. I think the gold suit, because of the fabric she chose, feels a little bit cheap and suits are not cheap. So I know she spent a pretty penny on this. She probably wanted a fabric that was like a little bit shiny on the runway, which is, you know what, is a good thought process, but I'm not sure that gold really works. Had she built the gold into the theme, I think it could have like, had she been like a cat that was money bagged or Mr. Scrooge or something like that, then it might have related a little bit. But it didn't really matter because I was more curious on what was on to the back. As she turns around, we find out that her back is filled with mice that are all having a party. And I was like, mm. had she not told me, I had not know what that was. I feel like this idea of a cat and a mouse is a very cute idea, but I just don't think that this is the way to have executed it. First off, I didn't really see the mice. I didn't really get the mice until she told me. Personally, I think I would have done a white cat suit. That is right, a full garment and not necessarily a suit suit. Maybe add a little like fur, a lapel or something to kind of give you that like cat vibes. I do like the mouse in the back, but then the mice in the back, I think you needed to be a little bit bigger and maybe even a little bit more costumey, a little bit more toys to really like get it noticed. You know what I mean? All in all, this really wasn't my favorite and I'm gonna have to go with a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Scarlet Envy, and Scarlet Envy is coming out wearing a sequins jumpsuit holding an Oscar. 
She said she's channeling her inner Barbara Streisand moment. As she comes out, I'm thinking this is a very strong start. This is a gorgeous garment that is very well made. She's channeling old Hollywood, which she has been doing all season and is making it a sort of a new trademark for her. I never necessarily saw Scarlett as an old Hollywood gal, but this season she's come up with a lot of different references. So I'm like, girl, work. Let us know who you are. And this Barbara Streisand one just really works. And she looks gorgeous doing it. As she turns around, we find out that her party at the back is her naked buttocks. And you lost me. Personally, we've seen so many naked buttocks done on Drag Race for years and years and years that this is no longer a surprise. I was expecting a lot more. Where is the party? Even last season on UK vs. The World 1, Lemon had planned on doing this outfit which was like business at the front and then party at the back and her whole back was naked. And so I always have that ingrained in my brain and thinking, Everybody who's gonna do naked at the back has to beat that and I don't feel like this did the front looks beautiful But the back is so predictable so expected so much so that another queen did it coming up as well Spoiler alert all in all. I don't know how I feel about this I love it from one side and I don't from the other But I think it's well made and she looks gorgeous and that is why I'm gonna go with a soft back. Next up, it's Theresa May. And Theresa May is coming out as a sort of like 60s inspired devil look with her little suitcase. It's giving me a little bit of that Avon sales lady that goes to your door and sells you makeup. You know, the one back in the day. Probably some of you are too young and don't even know that reference. But what I do love about this is that this feels very to Theresa May. This character that she does with the devil, this color combination, it is so stereotypically Teresa. And I love that she is sort of referencing herself and bringing you a different shape and illusion. But I was thinking to myself, is this really reading business? And my answer was no, it is reading dress at the front. And I could have forgiven it had she done an interesting reveal. But as she revealed, we just find out that it is again her naked buttocks showing her tail because she is the devil. And I think this is not that successful. First of all, the reveal is done. We saw it done with Scarlett. And I think Scarlett did it better because she showed her real buttocks while Theresa May showed it her padding. And since she's showing her padding, it's kind of like meh. It's just padding, you know what I mean? So I wish there was something bigger at the back. If she is a sales lady or if she has these panties, you know, like why wouldn't they have to be in her suitcase? Maybe she could have like ran and then the nothing came out of the suitcase and then everything that was on the suitcase was like glued to her back. You know, I think that could have been fun. I just need a bigger reveal. All in all, I think that this wasn't very business and this wasn't very party and it wasn't as successful as the others. And that is why I'm gonna have to go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's La Grande Dame, and La Grande Dame is coming out in this white dress with beautiful quafted blonde hair filled with rhinestones all over it. She is definitely giving you that wedding fantasy, and she looks elegant as always. La Grande Dame knows her fashion. Even when I don't like the outfits she chooses, you can see the construction in them is amazing. She really is into that, like, haute couture-esque moment of it all. I love this white dress. It is definitely a moment. It definitely gives you that <gasps> when she walks out because she looks stunning and beautiful. As she walks, you will already start to see a little bit of red on the background and that's the part that I hate. The reveal is almost already revealing even before she turns around and I'm like, mm, that's a little bit of a miss. As she turns around though, we find out that the red on her back were actually all these guns and knives and all of these things because she is an assassin. Now, I actually didn't see this coming. I obviously knew that it was gonna be black, but I was fully expecting it to be blood or something dripping or like a devil or, or something like that. I was not seeing weapons at all. She's definitely giving you that sort of like Mrs. Smith fantasy. I love that she rhinestone all of them. I love that they were red, so it contrasted against her white. It definitely gave you something to think about. And all in all, despite seeing that peekaboo, I quite enjoyed this look. La Grande Dame is very well put together and I love her thinking. And that is why she is gonna get a fab. Next up, it's Tia Coffee, and Tia Coffee is coming out in a sort of caramel colored dress paired with this auburn hair and this headpiece. 
First off, can we talk about, she is actually wearing a dress and not a bodysuit. Y'all have been going off in my comments complaining about how much Tia wears bodysuits. And honestly, I didn't even really notice until you guys pointed it out. And then I was like, oh wait, she does. This time she decided to come with a dress. And honestly, it's not that great, to be honest. It's quite a very simple, plain dress. And it is missing a little extra something for me. I'm not sure about the color. I don't think the color is really like contrasting against her skin tone. And I think I would have liked a lot of more fabric to make it a little bit more flowy, especially on the arms, because she has said that she is channeling Saint Sebastian. Now I love Saint Sebastian, so I knew exactly what this was, but because she said she is channeling Saint Sebastian, you already knew what the back was gonna be. It was gonna be a bunch of arrows with some blood on it. Like, come on. And as she turns around, guess what? It's a bunch of arrows with some blood on it. I wish that the arrows were bigger. I wish that the blood was more. I wish that there was just a lot more going on in this outfit. Does she look good? Yeah, I mean, she looks good, you know? Is it her best outfit? By no means, no. I was a little bit underwhelmed, especially coming from last week, which I thought she did really well. This one just felt like, nah, nah, nah. all in all, it's okay. I could go either way. You know, if I did 0.5s, I would have added a 0.5 to this. Is it a soft fab? Is it a soft drab? I don't know. But ultimately, I think I'm gonna go with a soft drab. <laughs> And that is it for this week's runway. Girl, I think that this theme had such potential to go in so many great places. I just don't know that the queens really fulfilled the fantasy. And this is really surprising because UK vs. The World 2 have been turning it out and have been being one of my best seasons. Honestly, I'm being extra hard with these queens because they are so damn good. But this runway left a little to be desired. But enough about that, let's get into the reason why you are here. You are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to... Anaconda. Oh. I didn't enjoy this. I didn't like it. I didn't get it. It was not for me. I'm happy when people do camp, but how are you going to do it? That makes it a little bit more interesting. I missed the message on this one and I missed the elegance. Oof. But enough about the negative. Let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Marina Summers. Girl, Marina was the only one to really take this theme and run with it. She was the only one that really knocked it out of the park. Everybody else was kind of meh. Except for Marina, I think she really did well on this one. A little bit of camp, a little bit of elegance, and a lot of just pure sophistication and Marina. That is it for this week's episode, y'all. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And I will say, if you are going to leave a comment, just all I say is, be kind. I'm here trying and I want to engage with you, but if you're attacking me, it does make it very difficult. On that note, once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you on my next episode. Bye bye.